Hey guys, how's it going? We're here to drag out a 1974 Carmen Ghia. It's been sitting forever and it's a basket case. Roll open that door! <laughs> There she is. So somebody painted it. They did a really nice job painting it, but everything is tore apart on it. Uh, the glass is over there, there's boxes, there's one seat. So we're gonna go drag it back and do our best to try to bring it back to life. Let's go get the trailer. That's gonna work well. <laughs> you got to steer it. Oh, oh, oh. Cut it sharp because I'm pulling from the wrong side is what the deal yeah, is. Look good. You could stay this way for a little while because I think as you get closer to the winch, it's going to want to pull the nose over anyway. You got six inches on this side. I don't want to go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna level out the trailer so it's not fighting gravity. There we go. You can go kind of straight now, I think. Probably gonna go another foot or two anyway. Perfect. All right, now that we're back at the home office, we can kind of relax and enjoy ourselves and see what we got. Uh, the, so the backstory on it was uh, a friend of mine had bought it, I want to say right around the year 2000, maybe 99, something like that. Drove it for 25,000 miles and then sold it to a friend of his. He had tear, uh, tore it all apart and painted it and it just never went back together. I guess it was a fairly solid car. It didn't have uh, a much rust on it. I think he said the only spot was probably right down here uh, inside the fender. Other than that, the car was pretty solid. But uh, when the bodywork was done, the paint was done, they did put floors in it. I guess they felt they were getting a little thin and they did that. Whether they took the body off, I don't think so. The paint looks decent. It's hard to tell by how much dirt is on it. It's really pretty, you know, Kind of scuzzy so what i can tell right away by looking down the sides it looks pretty straight so i think what we should probably do is we'll get a bunch of the junk 
out of it. We don't know what parts we have and don't have. Plus this car got moved around from a couple of different locations over the years. So I think a bunch of stuff possibly is missing in it. So I got some uh, boxes there on a bench right over there. We can kind of poke through, but let's empty the inside of it out. This is all the glass I think for it. I think we're missing some of the glass and then we should probably give it a pressure wash while everything's out of it because even like the inside is scuzzy too. I needed a color change. So I think it was green so that a dash would have been green. The doors would have been green and again everything's been painted black except for the roof. There's the original color kind of sort of. All right so let's go dig that stuff out and we'll start making a pile. I'm probably uh, compiling a list. I threw a couple of um, uh, roller tires on it so it's not riding on those those rotten flat tires. It's making that clunking noise in the back when it's rolling. So I don't know if there's a CV joint problem or a rear end. I don't know what we have also for um, engine condition. It was a running car, but who knows the last time it's run. I was looking at the fuel filter and it's like, I don't know if the light's gonna show, it's got like black mud <laughs> that's in it. So dual port, which is correct for this year. The car is a 74 and uh, all that looks fairly decent. All right, let me go get some uh, parts out of it. We'll see what we got. I got it all emptied out. It just has so much like bodywork dust in it everywhere. Normally I wouldn't pressure wash the inside of a car, but again, there's no, really no fabric. I think the only place there is anything. Somebody made like, this homemade fiberglass shelf. Germany is a back seat back there. But they have that little hatch there and there's some carpet back in there that's, I don't know if it's glued in or not, but we'll try to stay away maybe from that. We'll concentrate on it. But I, I want to get like all the floors and everything all washed out. The dash is all nasty. Steering column, steering wheel looks like it's bent. A bit of a curve to it. So I do have a parts car. I have a, um, I don't know if you guys remember, uh, old ratty yellow convertible. It's bad. It's terrible. <laughs> it's I think also a 74, but a problem is a lot of the convertible stuff is not the same. I also think we are missing one of the seats. I don't know if it's the driver or the passenger. And I also just noticed now we're missing. We got rails on that side for a seat, but there's nothing, nothing over here. I don't even know if we have them. It's another lug nut. Grab that. All right, let's go wheel it to the door and give her a bath. Maybe we'll drill a couple of holes in the floor so it can drain too. It probably would have been a good idea to drill the hole first, but let's see how deep the pool is. Try to find the lowest. I'm watching the bottom of the drill bit. See where it uh, drops down the most. It's looking like on that side. About, let's go for it right about there. What we'll do is we'll put a, a rubber plug in it later. Is that better? <laughs> Double checking, right there, we'll go for right there. Should definitely not be that hard to drill through. <laughs> there we go. A little 
whirlpool going. Go do the same to the other side. Almost forgot the deck lid. Bring that outside, go give that a bath too. Because the thing is, I don't want to get like, I don't want to rub a, a bunch of that crap into the black paint. That's why I'm trying to wash it off instead of blowing it off or wiping it off. Well, it kind of sucks to do that and you know, have to get it in all the places you really don't want to get water, but unfortunately, it just needed it. It really kind of needed to get washed out pretty good. I flipped up the back seat and I should have done that first because it's a little bit lower. That's about level actually. And uh, there was about a half inch thick of uh, Bondo dust just uh, swashing around inside that. See, we got like 95% of it, even more than that. You can still see a little bit you know, in between the tracks. We can vacuum that up after it dries, but you'll get all the crap off the dash. There's no gauges, nothing in it. They're in boxes sitting behind. And even like the carpet back there, I had to kind of give that a shot too, because you can see it. it was just all just packed with it. I think it has a carpet kit that's over there, so that may all get, be getting ripped out anyway. Not sure. I did notice that um, they shaved off the uh, Normiana Carmagia. There's two uh, chrome strips that run along the side. If you look at that far wall over there, you see where those little well marks are coming up? They welded all the holes up and filled it, so they deleted that stuff. They might have done some more too. We'll figure that out as it goes along. Glove box has a little bit of a, uh, a pool <laughs> going inside there. We could probably, for tonight, what I'll do is I'll put a couple of fans towards it and we'll let it just all kind of dry out. I'm not going to put power to it yet. But the paint looks really nice. That's kind of what I wanted to see after. Under all that dirt, black cars show everything. And it's pretty straight. I see, you know, maybe a little bit of wiggling by the door. When it dries off, we'll you know, we'll wipe it down, have a better idea. That was our, I don't know the hood look. Much better, huh? You can still see where the dirt kind of pulls a little bit, but we can get that with a vacuum. Now yeah, we'll leave all this open and let it get washed out. Nice original car, Carmen Gears. Oh, notorious, that is the nose of the car, for being dented in, because this actually sits out past the bumper. It's a little hard to tell where that bubble nose is. Everyone's always dented. <laughs> this one's looking pretty good though. I think I just noticed something else too. It is missing the holes for the directionals. Down in here would be a hole for directionals. <laughs> They're not there. I don't know if they welded them up on purpose. All right, let's go look through the boxes that are over here. Let's go get the, uh, the forklift's got like a little platform. Let's go grab that. Let's go take a look at what we have and what we don't have and kind of make ourselves a little bit of a shopping list. There we go, I got a little platform over here to work on. And, uh, these are the boxes that were in the garage. Let's go start with the, the small box. <laughs> let's see what's in that one. I'll pull it over and dump it onto here. One hook. That looks like a ring for like uh, one of the gauges. I found all the hardware <laughs> stuck to a magnet. And that is a bunch of nothing. Got a mirror with no glass in it. Uh, one sun visor. You got a box of hardware. Good. I don't know what that's for. Door bezels, door handles. Because uh, a bunch of hardware. We could probably take all that stuff on the. It's probably where it was. That magnet was probably in this box. Uh, I don't know if that's a, a VW stereo or an aftermarket. It's hard to say. It's only one speaker. And manual for a, a radio. I don't know if that's with us. It's like they were trying to make a radio up a dash plate for it. Well, this looks like a bunch of hardware. Let's go dump that. Here's a smoker. Let's go dump all that stuff into that box. You get to put it together. It's a puzzle with 
bunch of pieces missing. So that really makes it more challenging. More door clip. All right, let's go grab another box. It's actually like a box that was sitting in a box. And you got, these are the preheat hoop uh, tubes for the engine. And glove box, chrome glove box door. That's odd, I've never seen that before. The gauges, the clock. And how many miles are on it? What's that say? Then eight. I don't think it was rolled over, he said. This is 54,000. I don't know about that. Maybe. Been off the road for a long time. An armrest. The plate for the back for the shifter coupler. That looks like a Dodge. <laughs> yeah, that is not for. That is not for this car. What kind of that we're gonna find? You think money? We got hardware, keys. What we got money. Got a buck eighty. And some seals. Some of that. An electrical cord. I need for it. The horn button. Chrome trim. I think it's for the back window. You got tools. You got vice grips. Mac tools vice grip. Oh, that's a score. We'll put that in the different pile. Window regulator. It's like no rhyme or reason to this stuff, though. It's it's not exactly very well organized. It's like one of the directionals for the front that they drilled the hole and filled, and they cut the wires off, huh? That sucks. That was dopey. Just pull it away and pull the socket off. Seals. That is a hose from a compression tester. <laughs> Let's put that in the tools section. And bunch of junk. Let me get the junk out of it. Let's get you right over the top of the box and we'll, we'll see what we got. What is that? That's Japan. That is a Toyota part. Again, it was at a body shop, so I wonder how many of the boxes got kind of rearranged. So we got there's the knobs. Air. What about air conditioning? I don't think they say. Hmm. Maybe. Well, that's a good way to treat the chrome. Good thing they get rid of, <laughs> rid of the holes, huh? Alright, so. Like a hunk of metal for making something. That's garbage. Garbage. So I'm gonna go grab another clean box and I'm gonna throw this stuff in it. That is not for it, that's for something else. And we'll, we'll flip over what belongs in here and what doesn't. Door handle, one door handle. <laughs> See what I mean? It's like we think all the stuff would be put together, but it's not. So keep digging. Let's see what's in the other boxes. Right, let me go get a, a better box. We'll throw the stuff in it and grab another. Ooh, look what I found. The Bay Edge. Matches the car nicely, huh? All right, let's keep going. Put you on the other side of me. Make a little room. I do not know. Oh, inside the, inside the fender. It's like a skirt by uh, the back uh, front tire. I think the debris that kicks up, I believe that's what that is. We have another piece of metal that looks like they were making body parts for. Carpet. <laughs> uh, that's not Volkswagen. Chrysler Corporation. Two barrel. And we got carb kit for such carb. I don't know. I don't know what it is. is that a Volkswagen? I'll tell you in a second. That is not Volkswagen. So that's the carb kit for that carb. Bet you somebody was looking for that. <laughs> a broken window regulator. The glass is there. So that means we got a busted window. I do believe he said, remember him saying something about that. We have, it looks like a wiring harness. 
don't know if it's to this car or not, though. That doesn't look Volkswagen at all. Could be wrong, but that does not look like... Yeah, whatever that is. It says Mopar. So, that is a wiring harness out of some kind of 60s Mopar. Again, I have a feeling we're going to start finding a lot of that. <laughs> so now I don't know what we have. Well, that's got green paint on it, and the car was originally green. So we'll go with that being part of it. I'm just going to start throwing stuff on the bench. Filter. Base gasket for that carburetor. I do not know if that is the wiper motor for that. I've never seen one that looks like that. But I'm not that familiar with Carmen Ghia. It's got a ballast resistor on it. So that might be knocked down from 12 to 6 volt or 6 to 12 volt. A 6 volt motor running 12 volts. That doesn't look Volkswagen at all to me though. Somebody's Mopar is missing some parts. We have... That's Volkswagen. Yeah, it's got a VW emblem on it. One of the seat belts. A piece of molding that is not Volkswagen. A, I don't know. <laughs> That's like another part of a window regulator. And we've got to kind of look and see if it's got Volkswagen on it or not. The aftermarket door handle, a bracket for something. Another molding that is definitely not Volkswagen. I don't know what that's for. My my concern is oh, good. That's good. We got a, a, a decent handle wrapped up in paper. My concern is that there was like another box that you know wherever this Plymouth car was and other Chrysler parts. Keys? Is that ignition? Oh, look at that. So we have an ignition set. And a Mopar. Put that in the Mopar section. I have Mopars. And I think the rest of it's just the miscellaneous kind of like smalls. Of course, again, one door handle. box uh vendor ts bulbs nothing <laughs> so we've got one door handle let's go clear th this stuff off that does not look like volkswagen either and i think we got like two other boxes to look in hopefully the rest of the pieces are there let's go find out Probably should just keep throwing on top of that pile. It isn't gonna matter much. Then I'll see what we got for sets. The other, we, we have one already. That's the back window trim, I think. Rear tail lights. Ooh, we got tools. We got more tools. Look how dirty they are. Huh? We got a grilly hammer. <laughs> uh, a vent, I don't know. I think that's just, this is out front. The rear view mirror, paint filters, we got screwdrivers, ooh, we got snap-on screwdrivers, how many do we got, one, two, three, four, we might have a whole set, five, six, and a couple other little bits, that's a nice setup it's not a complete set it would have another shorty of a regular but that's not cheap that's a it's a deal right there for about 200 dollars worth of screwdrivers snap-on prices right what else we got air tool again it's probably from the body shop so i don't know how long ago it was painted the screwdriver a linux knife and what do they call them? A paw? All? A paw? All? All paw? So throw that with the tools. That's a little surfboard. <laughs> oh, it's, it's the air freshener from the, uh, <laughs> the rear view. Alright, so we can get rid of this junk. I don't think this stuff is 
past its due date. And what we got one, we got one more box to go. Hopefully it's got the other bits that we're missing. I'll just have you peek right in the box with me while we're picking stuff out. Where's it from? Where's Miller Auto Group from? Somebody will tell me. Where's that dealership from? That's where the car was new. These are the vents for the front. That's good. It's garbage. I don't know. I wouldn't say it's for the engine bay. Here's the lenses from the taillights. That's good. We have headlights with the adjusting bucket not on it it should be like a cradle that these uh, are able to adjust on or maybe that's it that might be it yeah this one's missing it though directional that they cut the hole didn't cut the hole for these are the dash vents a bunch of seals a ratchet strap of sorts Transmission motor mount. <laughs> right there, that's what that is. And I don't see much of the brake shoes in the bottle. There is the other lens. It's a jack point. I don't know if they put it back on or not. This goes under the body. Right when they cut the floors out, they may not have added it. I'm not like crazy about using them anyway. Yeah, there's the, there's the rest of the headlight stuff. There's the buckets for them. And do we have the bezels? I think we took those out, right? They were they had paint all over them, or uh, tape all over them. We got a set of horns. These go down below, under the um, under the under the front bumper. There's a hole for access for them. Not the two of them right next to each other. That's a deluxe Volkswagen. It's got two horns. We've got a pigtail for, looks like a stereo of some sort. I don't see the radio though. Oh, here's the, um, how long has that tape been on those, huh? This is the um, bezels for the headlights. What else we got? We got a jack, brake shoes. So we do not have the door handle. We're missing the door handle from the one side. I think I'm already knowing that we're missing. We've got a bunch of seals in here that's left. And uh, I don't think that is a Volkswagen. I'm not sure. That looks for a, for a tailgate for a pickup truck. That's what that is. That's not Volkswagen. Looks like all the seals that they removed from the car, which I doubt they're going to be good. There's the jack. I don't know what that is. I have a feeling that's a knot for the car. And I thought we already had one of these. This is the rear plate that goes over the shifter. We, are, we found one of these before too. And yeah, brake shoe parts. And that's it. We have... So... I don't think we're done. We do have... um spread out over here I'll bring you there so we have a carpet kit that looks like we should open that up go see what's in that's probably the door panels maybe that's chrome molding that's the dash pad which looks like it's got a big tear in the center I think it's kind of common to happen on those a piece of glass it's gonna suck though with that. That's the two rear view, the two rear windows. That may not be Volkswagen either. Let's go take a razor blade to kind of slice up some of this. So we are missing a door handle from the one side that would have been keyed correctly. And uh, yeah, let's go slice that open and see what's in there. Let's go cut this open. The other one, I think, is just all glass. I'm hoping. 
I know we're missing a bunch of stuff already. I could tell. Um, but we also paid accordingly because of that. I said I do have a convertible. I don't know if we have keys for the locks. What do we got here? So we got the other sun visor. I think we did have the one. These are the two rear kick panels that are actually fairly good. I don't know if they're, they're new. Yeah, they're new. New old. <laughs> got mold and stuff on them, but they'll clean up. Yeah. So that's nice. Two new panels. New-ish. A, a little bit of funky going on them. Oh, that's good. But we are definitely missing all the... Um, we have nothing for bumpers. We have um, a bezel. We should look at over there at that glass to see what we got. Take a quick peek in here. These were these, this stuff was just sitting in the car. So I guess it had tan interior because this should be the same as that one right there. But there's only one of them. And insulation. Spiders making a run for it. Just a little tune up junk. And I think these are all just the glass going to be in there. Probably one side window, the windshield, and the back window. Let's, um, I'm going to go slice those out of the box and we'll see what condition the glass is in, especially the windshield because that always gets pitted. You know, we're trying to assess our, our shopping list of what we got. So there's three pieces of glass in there. Hopefully we find something else, but I doubt it. I think I cracked that back window open. Doesn't look terrible. They're just dirty around the edges, of course. Actually, nobody, somebody put silicone. Yeah, it's got a bunch of silicone in it. Anybody recognize that sticker? What would that be? Parking sticker for somebody? It's a defrost piece of glass and it's got the chrome in it. Those are... Those are a bit of a pain in the ass to try to put in on a new seal. But at least we got it. And the windshield. It looks like it's got a inspection date. It ran out in 2004, so 2003, which kind of seems right. I think that's when he's saying around he sold it 20 years ago. It's been off the road for 20 years. And it's got kind of the same deal going on. Looks like it's got silicone around it. I'm just kind of looking. I probably should wash that to see if um, it's got a big, you know, wiper score marks or anything that's another thing we don't have we don't have wiper arms i didn't see any of those i don't know if there's a wiper motor under there i'm gonna go just set that on the car i right, so i made myself a shopping list of just things i'm seeing right away all right no bumpers we're missing a door handle for one side the body plugs this one kind of sucks because this is those holes right here this is to access the torsion tubes but they're supposed to be painted body color they're missing on both sides um yeah we could probably get something and paint it black but it's just not going to match you know the paint that's on there i was ho hoping to go find that you know uh what else where were we uh, all the seals of course we're missing the driver's window it's broken wiper arms are not there um one of the bezels for like the two gauges that go in there was only one bezel and the one that was bent also the door rocker moldings or like rocker sills so there's like a brushed aluminum pad uh, not pad but scuff plate that sets right there and kind of encapsulates over the carpet they're missing uh chrome over the rain gutters which is uh, this piece we could probably not put them on if the car is going to be like all black maybe we'll be all right with that um Rear deck pad. Oh, the okay. Um, chrome over the green gutter. We talked about brakes. Yeah, I'm sure all the brakes are going to need to be done. It's got disc brakes in the front too. Rear deck pad. That's below the back window. The radio's missing. We have one seat. We have one. I think it's the driver's seat, uh, passenger seat rather. <laughs> of course, all the hardware is going to be missing. Steering wheel's bent. That's so far on the list. So that pad I was talking about was whatever goes back there and sets on it. No back seat at all. Missing a seat, missing the um, 
I think we're missing the runners. There, there might have been the pieces of metal that we're kind of questioning. Might have been what goes there. So there's a bit. This, you know, of course, and then we get into it, we're going to start finding all the all the stuff for the in pieces inside the door, the regulators, all that kind of thing. Yeah. Unfortunately, like I said, I have a convertible, another 74, but it's a convertible. Convertible doesn't have a back window. I think the front window is different than it. it may come back or lean back a little further than what this is. Um, again, it has no post. So the, I think the glass is different. I think the doors are different. I think the windshield is a different size. Of course, the back window is a plastic back window or, or glass, but it's a you know much smaller. So we definitely have a bit to try to pick through. Uh, I don't know what we're missing underneath the front. We start getting into all the bits and pieces that are under there, what is and isn't there. But that's the nature of a basket case, right? All the pieces that have uh, walked <laughs> over time. Uh, I'm kind of thinking maybe we do have the bezels for the front. We have the pieces for the headlights. Again, no bumpers. The horn setup goes in the middle down there. We have some of that. Uh, I wonder if we'd be better off maybe trying to find a parts car, like a cheap, really just rotted out chip box, and it would be good. We can kind of pick from it. And uh, do I got crap in the lens? I do. I apologize. You got water spots. You've been looking through that water spot for a while. Let me go clean that off. Whole time you guys are trying to like, clean your screen. <laughs> no, it's on my end. Uh, so where was I? Yeah, I, I think maybe that might be the, a good way to go. I'm going to start getting an, um, an eyeball out, see what I can go shake down, see if something can go um, pop up to go chase all those little bits. The paint is awesome on it. It is so smooth. Again, it's got water spots and stuff on it, but looking at it, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but it's pretty nice. Let me ask Brian if he wants to come over before we start putting it together. Maybe he'll... Um, detail it before all the all the stuff is on it black car shows everything too you know okay it's got water spots on the roof but if you look at the light right there you can kind of see there's no uh no mess ups <laughs> as far as that's concerned all right so i'm gonna go kind of look into that but uh, i'm gonna let it drip dry for tonight i'm gonna go take a fan we'll take a fan we'll just shove it in it and let it um air circulate try to dry it out all night long and maybe tomorrow what we'll do we'll put it up on the lift we'll take a peek underneath it and uh, then we'll see what we got for an engine and transmission like i said i was rolling it it's like clunking i thought it was like lug nuts were loose but it's not there's a clunk in the back maybe there's like a cb joint axle that's not attached or something <laughs> again there's no i don't really have any history on it so that's what we'll do tomorrow we'll uh get her up on the lift take a peek underneath and uh see if hopefully she fires up and what we got for an engine and start doing an assessment on that stuff till tomorrow all right it's the next day and the fan's been circulating air on it all night see how that made out that looks pretty good how's that carpet in the back there for mostly dry <laughs> which is pretty good i guess looks like there's still some chalkiness left in it i'm not gonna be that concerned about it yeah like down in the doors i see that the driver's door has it worse. Probably from just kicked back when I was washing out the floor a couple more times. Yeah, all this. Oh well. Alright, let's get rid of our fan. And I think so next on the agenda, we'll get it. We'll push it out, we'll spin it around, and we'll get it up on the lift. We'll take a peek underneath, and then we'll see what we got for uh drivetrain uh Function wise, hopefully. <laughs> I see how that goes. All right, let's go under. We'll go explore together and we'll see what we got. Yeah, definitely AC car. That's a, a condenser in the front. Which I don't know if we ever put back together again, but it's nice that it's there. Frame head looks good. Disc brakes. Carmen Gears. I think all Carmen Gears, like after. Any of the ones with the four lug wheels have uh, cane factory with disc brakes in the front. I think we're missing a bolt in the pan there. I think we're missing a couple. There's another one missing there. The rockers don't look too bad. Carmen Gies are real notorious for that blowing out in them. I'm not sure how they put the pan. Looks like they put the pans in. 
without taking the body off because they cut that section. Stitched it back together here. It looked terrible though. I don't know what those screws are coming down. I think that's um, the floor tracks. I think they temporarily, temporarily <laughs> put them in place. They were trying to maybe figure out where they wanted to put them. And the other side. Yeah, they did the same thing. They sliced it here. Welded it on the inside. A slice there. Welded it. I've seen it much worse. How are we doing with bolts over here? We got everything. Yeah, this side's complete. We're just like missing two bolts on the other end. I hope there's a date on that sticker when it was done, when hold that pan is. A little fan for the AC unit. How's the bottom of the gas tank look? A little punky. I can't see the fuel line or anything. I don't know if there's anything in it. And there's some, uh, the AC hoses, they cut them. They would have been the hoses for uh, the AC. It's like they put like an undercoating or black paint in all the wheel wells. And so there's the one skirt that we were looking at. Is the one on the other side? Or are you missing it? Yeah, it's missing. That's that piece that we we're wondering where it went. So right, let's go check out our Ingeon setup. A weird motor mount. I'm not used to that one. That one's a little different. So there was a clunking going on in this side. Oh, the brake drum's broken in half. Look at that. There's your clunking. See it? <laughs> yeah, might need one of those. That's funky. I've never seen that before. I wonder if they plasma cut it off. I bet you. I bet you it was stuck. That looks like a plasma cutter, don't it? Get you a good light on it here. Uh, it's like they cut the drum. Well, that's the clunking. Some Bondo, they didn't... Uh, where's that seam sealer? That looks like seam sealer, huh? I don't see... It looks like pretty much... Look for patches. That might be a patch right there. No, it's not. It's original green paint underneath it. That was a pretty good solid car they started with. There's the AC hoses that are cut. Would have went back to the compressor. Looks like our engine is dripping. These are heater boxes. This is what brings heat. It's supposed to bring heat to the front. They look like they're pretty decent. They, they, sometimes they tell a story too. What weather um, was forecasted. All right, how's this brake drum? <laughs> they do the same thing. I don't know. I don't see. Possibly on the very top. All right, well, makes sense of what that clunking noise was. Let's, um, while we're here, let's get a uh, jumper switch on that starter. And because I, I don't know what this thing's got for an electrical system, but we can try and run it just off of uh, a jumper wire to a battery to energize the coil. And uh, we'll drape that. So we go get the wire hooked up to that. And we'll let her back down. See how it is. Yeah, it looks pretty decent. All the metal looks fairly good under here. I don't see anything. I don't see much in the way of patches or anything. It's all original stuff. And mufflers, uh, missing clamps and that mufflers junk. I think the tailpipes are ripped out of it, aren't they? Yeah, they're just, the uh, flanges that the tailpipes would bolt to are, are both missing. Let's go uh, get that wire on there and uh, see what our engine is like. Yeah, see what we got back here for electrical boogers. I guess this blue one's gonna be our ground. Coming off the block right there. And I'm guessing the one that looks like a bungee cord <laughs> is our hot side. I don't know what that's going to. Like that goes to the starter, but I'm not sure what that funky setup is doing. And there's our fuel filter with kind of looking like black glass, black gas in there. We'll just leave that alone. So what we're going to do is we'll get either a battery or jumper pack. We'll put it here, hook up the two leads. And then on the hot side, we'll just run a jumper to the hot side of the coil and give her a crank. See what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard you check the oil, especially because it's leaving spots wherever it is. And we are very low. I'm going to dump a quart or so in there. It only holds three. 
almost like 2.7 actually. Throw a quart of oil in there and then we'll give her a crank. All right, you see we got dumped a quart in there. I actually didn't check it. I hooked up a test light. I don't know if you can see it on the left hand side over there, right here. Let me kill one of these lights. There you go. And that's hooked to the oil pressure switch and the light should be on when it's not running. And then if it builds oil pressure, it should shut off. So let's hopefully give it a crank. There you go. We'll watch that, see if that oil light goes out. Compression sounds pretty good, pretty even. Come on, light, there you go. All right, we got oil pressure. Let's go, oof, rotten gas though. So we need the hot side of the coil, which is gonna be the opposite side of the distributor. The distributor is the ground side. So the wire coming off of the distributor, which is where, here, is going to the top. So the bottom side is the hot side of the coil, right there. And we're gonna go hook that to, give it a touch first. We're gonna hook that the power that's going to energize the coil i do not know if it has any kind of spark oh, the, th <laughs> the throttle's totally stuck yeah this thing's been sitting a while good wire just get that out of there let's go get this off sometimes you can pull it right off let's go dribble a little bit of fuel down it Oof. yeah there's the choke, the choke stuck, everything's stuck. Yeah, it's gonna need a bunch of love. But again, we're just trying to do an assessment, right? Let's go get a squirt bottle and dump some fuel in it. It shouldn't really need any throttle or much throttle. Let's give her, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. It sticks wherever you leave it anyhow. That carb's gonna have to come off and be done. Let's go give her just a little bit, see if it goes to, to cough. There you go. All right. Let's, um, I'm gonna backfill the uh, float bowl. I'm gonna take a pair of new nose vice grips to pinch off that fuel line so it doesn't fill it up. There might already be gas in there, I don't know. Yeah, let's get that a little, uh, it would be uh, this one going to the carb. And there's a horn up on top, which is a, a vent to the fuel bowl. Fill that up. And it should be enough to make it run. I don't think there was anything in it because it would have overflowed by now. I got a little bit left. Let's just go squirt that down in there to fire it. All right, give her. Ah. <laughs> I'm gonna give her a little, little more throttle. Up. I don't think it took any of the gas from the float ball. I think it's just running off of whatever we dribble in it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a rag in the back. <laughs> Let me put a rag in the fan. Why would you do that? Yeah, let me work on getting that out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Made me jump. I got to refuel in the bottle. Let's um try to tap up, top up the uh, float bowl. And we'll see if we can kind of like run it off the bottle. Yeah, it is definitely full over full. So now we need to disconnect. Definitely when you walk away, disconnect power to the coil. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Yeah, at least we know the points are good. <laughs> There's the rag. <laughs> Let's get rid of that and uh, give her another shot. Yeah. 
I don't know if it used up what was in the float or just what got dribbled down it. Let's um, try that again. Don't know if I have a carb kit for this right now. Come on, baby. on all four pretty even. Yeah, that's overdoing it, but we know that carb's dirty. Where's the fuel? Clear it out. The carb's working, the accelerator pump is working. Let's run it out. I'm gonna go air us out a little bit. Oof. Well, that part seems to be pretty decent. No weird noises, no running on three cylinders. Let's get rid of all this power that's back here. Let's zap anything out. Excellent. Yeah, just, you know, from sitting. But when I was revving it, I was looking down the throat and you see the little brass that's the closest to us. You know, it's facing uh, this way, that one right there. If you nail the throttle, you can see fuel was squirting out of it. That's the accelerator pump, so that works off of the uh, float bowl. So that seemed to be doing the functioning that it's supposed to be doing. Yeah, it looks pretty stock too, which is nice. It's not all boogered up. Other than the uh, that, which is just an, an aftermarket uh, oil fill with a little different neck on it. Looks pretty bone stock. The tin on the bottom, that's a patch in there. It looks like it might be out of something else. A little bit of hackery going on over there. All right, yeehaw. <laughs> Anything else back there? Can you see? <laughs> see a wire or something hanging. Good, good first assessment, I think. And uh, I was looking, the next day I came in, unfortunately, uh, I took a look over here at the windshield a little bit better. And at the closer inspection, there's a crack right there. You know, you know, depending on what angle you look at it, we got it there, you can kind of see it. And there's two right here. So the thing got pushed or set down wrong or whatever it was. And uh, that windshield was boogered out. Too bad because it's not smoked in any of the corners. A lot of times like a white mist will start getting in between the glass. And uh, that could have even been broke when they took it out. It's, it's hard to get the glass out. Like they didn't cut the seal. They just pushed the glass out and doing that probably cracked it when they took it out is my guess but we need one of those too <laughs> yeah so I think our best bet uh, cheap uh, cost effective wise will be to try and see if we can find a parts car and what's also good about getting a parts car too is we I don't know what hardware went in what like what size screws were there what all that kind of the little bitty things or the stuff that kicks your ass it's not buying the big ticket items and putting it in it's the you know, I need, you know, what screws hold the door handle in from that side and you know, what are the screws that can go inside there? Where's the little bars, the little latches, the rods that attach the, um, the lo door lock and the handle lock to the outside pull. The little caps that go inside here that are missing with the screws that are in there. So that's the stuff that'll just kill you because it's, <laughs> you know, figure each little bag of screws is eight, 10 bucks and uh, you need 50 of them. So right there alone, 
and then just something to copy off of. You know, seat belts, how much of the seat belts do we have? We have one over there and one the other. I don't see either of the center post ones. I think that's not there. And just all kinds of dumb stuff. So we definitely got to work cut out for us, but definitely got a good start, you know. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about doing welding or painting. That part of it is just awesome. I mean, unless Brian will come over and, and detail it before we start putting it together while all the handles and stuff are off. Let him go through and try to, you know, buff the paint out. I think I do see some scratching right here, like something was up against it. Hopefully that comes out. Yeah, there, there, there. The rest of it looked pretty good. I didn't see much anywhere else on the car. Oh yeah, the spot I saw was in the far corner. Looks like they tried to wet sand it. And you can see like they kind of, like I had a run in it. It was right here. And you can see like it's, they tried to get this run out, but then they started sanding through and they started hitting a little bit of the, the primer underneath it. I'm not gonna worry about it, but it is what it is. Guys, <laughs> I'm to the point of rambling as usual. So I think on this one, we're gonna go shut her down. Well, thank you all for uh, hanging out with me, doing a little bit of wrenching, bringing old 50 year old Volkswagens back to life. And uh, hopefully we are able to get ourselves a parts car for this thing and uh, get her resurrected over the winter. Till then, I'll see you later. Let's go load up our next victim. Oh, ain't she just a peach? It's the rare racing model with a reverse hood scoop. <laughs>